holy name why he has done great things come on lift your voice and sing he has done great things come on lift your voice and sing he has done great Bless his holy name, I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his Welcome to the New Mission Temple Church of God in Christ, here located at 4700 West Polk in Chicago, Illinois, where our motto is rescuing the perishing. We're honored to have you here. Our pastor, Elder Herbert Perkett Jr. is here. We want to welcome you. Come on and join in with us as we go in worship and as we go in praise. Anybody looking for a word from the Lord? If you're looking for a word from the Lord, I dare you to lift your hands and say, send the message. Send the message. And I want you to also say, touch our messenger. Touch our pastor on today. Come one, come all. Join in as we go in praise and worship. If you have any issues, concerns, or what is it? Health issues, concerns, sickness mind issues, pain, or if you just come to praise God, you are in the right place at the right time. Somebody say amen. We're calling on Brother Antoine Reed as he comes in and prays for us on today, followed by Sister April Perquet as she comes in with a word of scripture. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for being here today. Lord, we thank you for waking up, up, waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Lord, we just ask that you bless this service, God. We ask that you bless our pastor, God, as he brings forth the message. Lord, we ask that you bless the choir on today, God. We just thank you, Lord, for bringing us through another week, God. Trials and tribulations, God, you saw us through, and we just say thank you, God visions that you continue to make for us, God. We just thank you, God. We thank you, God. We lift you up, God. We just thank you for health, God. We thank you for strength. We thank you for being in our right minds, God. You just... Even now, God, touch the service, God, because we know that you're able, God. We ask that you continue to push us forth, God. We ask that you continue to bless our church, God, even on this corner, God. Those who are listening, God, go where they are, God, and touch them, God, because we know that you are able, God. Touch their finances, God. Touch their homes and their health, God. Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you for peace on this morning, God. We thank you for love and kindness on this morning, God. We thank you for your word, God. So 
so that we can walk in honesty and truth, God. We just thank you, Lord. In your word, God, you said you'd never leave us or forsake you, God. And we stand on your promise, God, because your promises are true, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you bless this service, God. We ask that you continue to walk with us, Lord, as we manifest, God, for the word that we hear today, we may take it throughout the week, God, and live it, God. Not only hear it, Lord, but live it on this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, expect they have done mischief, and they sleep, and they sleep and is taken away. Unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of the wickedness and drink of the wine of violence. But the path of the just is just a shining light and ascended more and more until the perfect day. I read to you Proverbs 4 through 14 through 18. Let, let the Lord be a blessing to the reading of his word. Praise the Lord, saints. How many are glad that you are here today? Look at your neighbor and say, I'm glad that you're here. Those of you that are out there in virtual land, just hashtag and say, I'm, it's another day and another week that he's kept. It. Don't hashtag all that. Just say, I'm glad to be here. How many of you thankful? Anybody thankful? Anybody thankful? Yeah, yeah. If you're thankful, say, Lord, I thank you. Come on, say it again. Lord, I thank you. Thank you. We're going to shift just a little, and we're just going to go in thanks. Giving God thanks for all that he has done for me. I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. Come on, clap your hands real quick. Come on, clap your hands all over. Y'all looking at me funny. Come on, clap. Just want to thank you. Just want to thank you. Forever and ever oh. and ever oh. for all you've done for me. Those of you in virtual land, come on, clap your hands with us. Blessings and glory oh. and honor. Yeah, y'all sound good. They all belong to you. See you, Mother Mark. And ever. Hey, yeah. And ever.
Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for protecting me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your blood covering. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. People dying all across this country. But Lord, I thank you. Keeping me one more time. Yes, Lord. Oh, yes. If you are enjoying, woo, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Lord, and all that is within me, I will bless his holy name. His holy because name. he is good. Yes. His mercy endureth yes. forever, forever and ever. Thank you, Jesus, yes. for blessing me. I want to say thank you all for joining us today. If you are enjoying us, if you're enjoying the services here at the New Mission Temple Church of God in Christ, we admonish you, we encourage you to send us a note, send us a letter, let us know, let the pastor know, let Mother Burkhead, all of the missionaries, the what you are enjoying about the service, we want to hear from you. If you desire to be saved, if you desire to reach out to us, you can call us at 773-287-6017. You can email us at new.mission50 at outlook.com. Also, if you would love to be of support and in support of the New Mission Temple Church of God in Christ, remember, our motto is rescuing the perishing perishing 
three ways that you can give and support us here at the temple. You can cash app us at dollar sign NMT50. You also can zell us at new underscore mission at att.net. And then you can mail checks to New Mission Temple Church of God in Christ at 4700 West Polk, Chicago, Illinois, 60644. We would love to hear from you in all of those ways, some way, shape, or form. How many of you are enjoying the service on today? Somebody say, somebody hashtag us out there in virtual line and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for this blessing. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to do something real quick. Pastor, if I have your permission, can I call on a testimony? It, I want somebody from our audience. We don't have a lot, but I believe where there's two or three, two or three gathered, God said he would be with us. Yes. I know, I know, I didn't prompt you. I don't want to prompt you, but I just want to ask if somebody, somebody, Brother Matt, grab a mic real quick. Run down here, run down here. Minister Terry, who's wonderful in all of his doing. Run down here real quick. Have the mic just like this. I just want you to have it just like this. And I want somebody to run down here and tell how God has blessed you just this past week. Come on, come on, real quick. Somebody, somebody, somebody. If you can think of something that the Lord has done for you. Uh. Yeah. Why are you not left out either? I only got five more seconds. Y'all can't think of nothing that God has done for you. If you can think of something that the Lord has done for you, okay. Sister Perkett is here. She has her own mic. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister Perkett. Well, all I can say is when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all is, that he has done for me, my soul shall rejoice in the Lord. God is good. You know what I can say? That the enemy hasn't been attacked in God's people. But God is a reassurer of our faith. God is a lifter up of our heads. God is a restorer of our strength. I don't know about anybody there. I can't tell my whole story right now. But I can say what God has done for me. That God is a true shelter in the time of storm. God is my peace. He is my joy. I'm witnessing to those that's listening to me. No matter what you're going through, God has our back. He'll never leave us alone. He'll be with us in the front, the back, the side, the left, and the right. He, be, he will be with you. And I just wanted to say that I give all the glory to God. I can't keep silent. I ain't going to let the rocks cry out for me. I got to shout it out to God is good. God is good. God is good and his mercy endureth forever. Amen. 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 Amen, amen. Amen. Wait, I got another Mr. testimony. <laughs> Go ahead, Sister It's Angie. not my testimony, but when Sister Evelyn said well, about the breath, yeah. I think about my sister Thelma. On last week, yeah. she came in here, she was sitting there, she was silent. But I think about the words of this song that says, and I will not be silent. I will always worship you. I will always give you glory. I will give you honor. But while she sat there, she was struggling with breathing. We that have breath in our body, we need to give God praise every moment we have. With every breath that I take, I'm going to give God glory. She could have been well dead, but God kept breathing through her lungs. While the clocks were there blocking her lungs, God gave her breath to breathe. She came up and asked for prayer. And then she went back in that back room and closed the door. God led me into that room and told Thelma, something is wrong. I don't care what the doctor said to you. You're not breathing right. And I said, when you leave from this church, if you're still not breathing right, y'all don't know how important your breath is. Without the breath in you, you wouldn't even be alive. So when she left here, I was told that she went to the emergency room. And not only one clot there, but there was multiple clots there. I thank God for my breath. While I have breath in me, there is a scripture that says, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. 
You don't know when it's gonna be your last moment. Why you got breath flowing through your lungs? You ought to give God some praise. He didn't have to do it, but he did it. Why are you here? You didn't walk through that door on your own, but you got breath breathing through your lungs. Give God some glory on today. He's breathing through you. He gave you the ability. He protected your lungs. Give God glory in this place. Hallelujah. Somebody out there may not be able to breathe on this morning. Trust God for the breath to give you the ability to breathe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think. Come on, minister. <laughs> Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. If you know him to be a, a clock disruptor, somebody say, Glory. thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. If you know him to be a COVID destroyer, somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Right now. Right now. Now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody out there needs to know that God is in control. Yes, he is. Amen. We're going to our final song before the word comes in, in, in the capable, most capable hands of our leader, Pastor Herbert Perkett Jr. But as we look at all of the destruction that is going on in this land, don't be dismayed. God's got our back somebody say God's got our back, God's got our back. he is in control yes, he even is. now yes he is the wares of the enemy is clear he is coming to destroy all that he can but the devil is a liar yes. God is in control yes. of this moment and he wants us now, even now, somebody say, trust me. Trust me. Somebody say, trust me. Trust me. Come on, he doesn't want you to trust me, Brother Phil, but he wants you to trust him. How many of you are believers in the Lord? Hallelujah. How many of you believers are believers in the Lord? Hallelujah. And I understand that even we, as believers can get weak, can get torn, can get distracted and disappointed, but the devil is a liar. He has it all in his hands. He say, somebody say it's in his hands. It's, it's in, in his, his hands. hands. It's all in his hands. But you have to trust him. Come on, choir. Oh. Somebody say, trust me. Somebody say, trust me. Trust, trust. Hashtag out there, trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Come on, let's go. I will be with you. I will be with you. Yes, I will be with you. I will be with you. Mm, I will. I will be with you, ladies. If you will only trust me, trust me, trust me, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight.
you can join in and sing with us. I'll never leave you. I'll never leave you, yeah. I'll never leave you. If you will only trust. Come on, let there be a spirit of worship in the house on today, in your home, right where you are. Amen, amen. This is testimony moment, right, by, right where you are. God is saying, I will. I will if you only trust me. So I just want you to reply to the Lord. He just wants to hear from you right now. God, I trust you. Come on, talk not to me. You don't have to tell me. Because I can't do nothing for you. I can give you $5 every now and then. But God can give you so much more. So from the depths of your soul, begin to just worship him. And tell him, God, I trust you. I trust you. Hallelujah, God, I trust you.
One more time, I'm getting ready more. the praise Hallelujah. by the clapping of your hand. Hallelujah. Come on, there's a praise right there. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We glorify you. We exalt you above everyone and everything. There is nobody like you. So, Father, I pray now for these next few moments, God, that you get the glory out of every word because it, it is your word. We reverence it, God. In the name of Jesus, Get the glory out of what we say and do now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And I promise you, God, for what you do for us, we will give it back to you. As little as we have, accept this praise, God. Accept our worship, God. We worship you, God. Come on, somebody. From the depths of your lips, we worship you, God. We worship you, God. Come on, somebody. Worship you, God. Come on, I feel a spirit of testimony. Come on, somebody. Thank God. Thank God for what you have right now. The shelter over your head. The clothes on your back. The food that you have on your table. God, for protecting us from the enemy, the COVID, God. These variants, God. God, I thank you. Come on, from the depths of your lips, I thank you. 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 I thank you, God. Uh, in Jesus' name, thank God, thank God. Come on, those of you that are in the house today, clap your hands and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you in Jesus' name. You may be seated. Amen. We make you welcome one more time into the New Mission Temple, Church of God in Christ. Amen. We are still crying aloud. We're still letting somebody know. People know that Jesus is yet alive. Jesus is yet alive. He is still performing miracles. Is there anything too hard for God? Amen. No matter what you've been through, amen, God deserves all of our praise. Amen, somebody. God deserves all of our praise. Well, I just want to thank God today. Amen, amen. I'm going to be finished when I be finished. Amen. That's not grammatically correct. Don't nobody send me an email. Amen. But then I'm going to be finished when I be finished. Amen. But I thank God for you today. Amen. I just want to thank God for, amen, I tell you. It's been a hard season. We have some that have COVID even in the church. But I thank God for those that have overcome COVID. Amen. Mother Martin is in the house and Elder James Allen is in the house. Mother Perkett is in the house. Amen. The seniors are here. Mother Thomas is in the house. And I saw Mother McKinney walk in the house. Amen. Sister Renee is in the house. I'm just happy to see the saints of God. Amen. Especially we don't see you all the time. Brother Dan is in the house. Amen. We sitting here. Amen. Sister Dorothy is back there in the house. Amen. I thank God for all of you that are here. Amen. We're going to go into the word 21st chapter of St. John. 21st chapter of St. John. Amen. Jesus is alive and he is risen. Amen. He is alive and he is risen. And so as we go into this chapter here, amen, I, I just want us to know that we should talk about Jesus. Christina, we talk about a lot of stuff. Amen. Who shot John? Who did who wrong? who wore something they had no business wearing. We, we talk about a lot of stuff, but we don't talk enough about Jesus. Him crucified, and that he got up on the third day. 
I don't care if he died on Wednesday and got up on Friday, Thursday, or on a Saturday. All I know is that he died. And that he got up, that is my faith. If you take that away from me, I might as well just call it in because I have nothing else to live for if he didn't get up. Amen. All the sacrifices that I made, it don't matter. So I have willingly given all that I have, all that I've done every, ever since August 12th, 1975. Amen. I have given myself to the Lord because I believe this. Amen. I ain't read about it. I'm true to this. Amen. Are you true to this? Look at somebody say, I'm about this. Amen. I'm about the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm about about I'm about it. I'm about it. Amen. I can't spit no no rhymes and all that stuff, but I can tell you that Jesus is alive. I believe that from the depths of my soul. So, amen. I believe this. I believe that God puts us all when we yield ourselves to him, that God puts us in places that he has purposed for us to be. Amen. All of us have purpose. All of us. Amen. The choir members that were singing today, blending their voices. Listen, they didn't just get there, but they had purpose. Amen. My nephew over there. Purpose. Amen. God bless. Amen. What's your name? Amen. God bless Brother Roy. Amen. <laughs> That's my nephew. God bless you. You have purpose. Mother Perkett. Born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. But God saw fit however many years ago, 64 years ago, that a man would come and take her from Memphis, Tennessee and bring her to Chicago, Illinois. Five children have been born and we are all in the gospel. We are all, amen, living our life for the Lord. You have purpose. And, and see, the thing is, amen, what God told you to do yesteryear is still the same for this year. Amen. Can I get somebody to say amen? What God has instructed even through his word is still the same even for now. Ain't nothing changed. Amen. Nothing's changed. It's still the same. Amen. God told us to live holy. I'd have heard somebody shout that. Amen. God told us to be holy. Uh, what did he tell you to do? Be holy. Come on, somebody. Am I in the right place on today? God told us to be holy. I am holy, and he has told us to be holy. It is not according to how I feel. Uh, it's just what I feel. Don't judge me. Mm -mm. God told us to be holy. Amen. I'm not going to go into none of that today, but I'm telling you what I said to the Lord. In the 21st chapter, amen, we see here, as we head toward Pentecost Sunday, Jesus has arisen. He's alive. Amen. He said, it is finished. It is finished. He got up and he got up from the grave and he took on an immortal body. And as he took on the immortal body, there was times that Jesus presented himself. In this chapter, it was the third time that he had presented himself to the disciples. It's interesting to me that when Jesus got up out the grave, when he rose up, he told his disciples to meet him. He said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. Now, that word Galilee means circuit. And those of you that don't know anything, that know anything about electrical connection, amen, when there's a circuit, it, it's a, a, a connection from beginning to the end. When you turn your light switch off, that means your circuit has been broken. Your connection has been broken. Thank God for the light switch. But when you turn it back on, it comes back together from the power source into your house. So when Jesus died, the circuit had been broken because he had to die for the sins of everybody. More specifically, he had to die. Can I make it personal? He had to die for me, for little old Herb. I wish somebody would say amen. Y'all help me out on today. I'm only going to be a few minutes. 
he had to die for me. So, amen, the circuit had been broken. So when he got up and he saw the women that were there to, to, to bless him or to bring spices, he told them to meet me in Galilee. The word had never been broken. What the instructions were, even before he died, he gave them specific instructions. He gave them specific things that they were to do. And it had not been tarnished. It had not been misevaluated. Or, but it was for them to do exactly well. Amen. The Bible says even in the 20th chapter that even then they were yet confused somewhat. You read where even doubting Thomas in 20 and 28, Dom, Thomas answered and said unto him, after he had said, Jesus had told him to reach your hand, put your hand in thy finger, put thy finger and behold my hands. Reach his as thy hand and thrust them into my side and be not faithless, but be believing, but believe in the word of God. I'm coming in in just a second. And Thomas answered and said, my Lord and my God. He said unto him, Thomas, be thou, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Amen. I trust you. Is there still a trust in the Lord on today? I trust you. So it goes into the 21st chapter. Jesus appears to the they're the disciples while they are fishing. They go to the Sea of Tiberias. And they go and Jesus, now Jesus told them what to do. In 21 and 1, he says, after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And on this wise, he showed himself. They were together, Simon, Peter, Thomas, called that same one that had, that had doubts. And Nathaniel the sons of Zebedee, and two of his other disciples. Simon Peter said, I go a-fishing. Simon Peter said, I go fishing. Now, this was the same fisherman that was found in the Saint, uh, fifth chapter of St. Luke when Jesus told them to launch out into the deep. He told them to launch out into the deep. And then, after that situation, he told them, I will now make you fishers of men. He didn't tell them to keep on fishing for the fish, but he told them, now I need you to be fishers of men. Well, here, now they were in a place of the circuit had been broken. I want to encourage somebody today to stay connected to Jesus Christ. Can I encourage you today, no matter what's going on in your life, stay connected to Jesus Christ. Can I tell you this? It doesn't matter what shots you take. It don't matter what Dr. Fauci said or President Biden say. It don't matter. But what it matters is that you have faith in Jesus Christ. Can I get somebody to say, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. It don't matter. It don't matter. So he says, I go fishing. They said unto him, amen. We confused too. We confused too. Yeah. He's not here, so we're going to go fishing with you as well. They went forth and entered into a ship, amen, immediately, immediately they went into a ship. And the Bible says at that night they, they fished all night long. And what the Bible say, they caught nothing, nothing. Man, I want you to get this today. Amen. If you're going in your own, if you're going in your own way, your own thoughts, your own imagination, amen, and nothing's happening for you, amen, follow Jesus. How to get some amens on that. Follow Jesus. Do what Jesus told you to do. If Jesus told you to pray like never before, pray like never before. If he told you to fast, I want you to fast. If he told you to put your face in this word, amen. If he told you to go out there on the corner and preach the word of God, do what God told you. Well, I, I got to feed my family. I understand that you got to feed your family. But if you take care of God's business, God will take care of yours. Can I tell you that? If you take care of what God has told you to do, God will. Somebody say, yes, he will. He will take care of yours. They caught nothing. But when, now, they were out there all night long. I'm sure it had to be frustrating. Listen, 
Hey Amen. We done followed this man for three years. We done seen him open up the blinded eyes. We've seen him, amen, heal, uh, heal those that were lame. We seen him raise the dead. We, but he's not here. That connection has been broken. But he's not here, and we are cloudy in our thought process. But when the morning was coming, the fourth verse, Jesus stood on the shore. But they didn't know it was Jesus. The same Jesus on the same shoreline that told him to launch out into the deep. The same Jesus that they saw open up blinded eyes. This same Jesus that had met them in the 20th chapter of St. John. This same Jesus, they knew not who he was. They went forth and into the uh, uh, ship. I mean, the, in the fourth verse says, when morning was come, Jesus was stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus answered them and said, children, children, have you any meat? I need y'all to get this today. Children, have you any meat? How many of you remember the times that you were instructed to wash the dishes, mop the flow in your household when you were little babies? And you were slow about doing whatever you were told to do. And here come mama or daddy. Little Herbie, didn't I tell you? Now, if y'all was like in my households, there were different tones in the voices. How many of y'all remember that? There was a sweet way of calling you. And there was a rough way of calling you. I don't know about any of y'all, but if my mother or father or somebody said, Herbert J., did not tell you. I knew that it was my last chance to get done what needed to be get done. And, uh, and when they would call you in that certain way, didn't I tell you, you was looking around to see what it was that I done forgot to do. Children, have you any meat? This is not what I told y'all to do. I didn't tell y'all to go back to fishing. I didn't tell y'all to do that. What I told you was to go out there. Listen, I'm almost finished. He says, children, have you any meat? They said, no, we've been out here all night long. And the thing about it, they were frustrated because they went back to doing the thing that they did, always did. Yeah, right. And he says, cash a net, something simple. Cash a net on the right side, and ye shall find. They cast a net, therefore, and now they were not able to draw for the multitude of fishes. I want to jump down. Therefore, even after that, they went to the point where even Peter said, I know it's Jesus. I, I can tell because I've seen the actions. I've seen who he is. He has power and authority even in his direction. Amen. I want to encourage you today to walk in your authority of Jesus Christ. I need you to be encouraged to walk in your authority. Come on, somebody. You can speak to the wind like Jesus did. And the Bible says that even the wind will obey you. You can speak to your illness, and even your illness will walk in line because of the authority. Do you have any authority on today? Come on, somebody, and tell God, I trust you. Yeah. So, so he says in the 10th verse, Jesus said unto them, bring the fish which ye have not now caught. Bring the fish. Simon Peter went up and drew the net, brought it to a land, 150 uh, and 3, 153. And the 12th verse is where I want to, I just want to stay on today. Jesus said unto them, come and dine. And I want you to take this thought with you. A permanent invitation. A permanent invitation. No matter what you are going through, there is a permanent invitation. Jesus said, come rest. Come be healed. Come lay your burdens. Come and get whatever you need. 
he said to them, come and dine. Can I get somebody today to understand the authority and the invitation that God has made to you today? He said, come and dine. Come and eat. Come and, and just revel in who I am because who I am, God is God and there is nobody like him. So he says, come unto me, all ye that are laboring and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I'm talking to those that are struggling with everything that's within you and you just don't know. Can I tell you this? Come to Jesus. Can I tell you this? Come to Jesus. Come and rest on Jesus. All you single mothers out there that is trying to figure out how you're going to do it without that man, come to Jesus. Can I tell you this? He'll give you food when there is no food. Wasn't it this same Jesus that took five loaves and two fish and he fed how many? Five plus thousand. Isn't it the same Jesus? Come on, somebody. Won't he do it? I need somebody to say, yes, he will. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? Yes, he will. Come and dine. Come and dine. Amen. This is interesting because the Bible says that all of them knew who he was. Without he, They knew that he was the Lord. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth to them and fish likewise. This is the third time Jesus showed himself. Coming to a close. After Jesus fed them, he then got to the foundation of his visit this third time. He sat and looked in the face of Peter. He said, Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me than these? I want you to get this point. It was with his brethren. They had developed kinship. And sometimes we'll die for our brothers in the cause. What do you mean? They got a saying out here in the street, snitches get what? What does that mean? Because no matter what go on, there is a level of camaraderie that no matter what, we close, we ride. They have another saying, I'm a ride till I what? Jesus said to Simon, do you love me more so than you love these that you'll ride or die? Do you love me more than your blood? Do you love me more than your mama, more your daddy? Your children, do you love me? He says unto him, yea, Lord. You know, uh, I love Sister Allen, Catherine Allen. She always says, your mouth can say anything. And what she's saying, that's a true saying. Your mouth can say, there's many folks that's been at the altar and say, I love you to death do us part. Uh, well, nah, you know, that's something else. I'm not going to get in that. He said, yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. He said unto them, feed my lamb. He says unto them the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you really love me? He says unto him, yea, Lord, you know that I love you. He said unto them, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he had said, third time, nah, I done got aggravated. Where you going with this, man? You know I love you. Yeah, I know I had a problem. I know I ran. I know I ran when they put, pulled, uh, pulled you out in the garden against him. I know, I know. I know when, when I was challenged, amen, that uh, I, I cursed before the cock crowed three times. I know, God. I know I got some issues. I'm ready to fight. He says, but you know I'm here, man. I'm here for you. He said, even them, he said, lovest thou me? And he said to him, Lord, Lord, thou knowest all things. 
Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus know you love him. But he knows there is a level that even goes beyond your, even your feeling. He says unto them, Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself. And walkest whither thou wouldest, but when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee. I'm going to close with this. There was a movie in 1997 called Soul Food. Soul Food. How many of y'all remember that movie? It was a movie that it was an old grandmother that every Sunday she would pull her family in and they would sit at the table and they would eat and fellowship every Sunday. It was something that they did for years. But all of a sudden, Grandma died. And after, and after Grandma died, who was the glue that held everything together. After she died, they, become, they became contentious in their weekly, to the point where every time they would come together, it was a fight. But at the end of that movie, it was the grandson that said, Grandma told us to stay together. She gave us instructions to stay together. Well, at the end of that movie, because of their commitment to being together, they realized that there was a blessing in the house. There was money. My grandma didn't believe in putting money in the bank. So she had money in the oven or in the wall, whatever it was. She had money in the wall. Well, what am I saying? Jesus has promised us to come. It's a permanent invitation to come and die. Come. Because when we're dying together, that's when we are eating together. And that's when we should be putting off. That's the moment that we should be putting off all pretensions because we are fellowshipping come and dine at the table. We are in a season where we can't even come together. This is where we come and get our spiritual food. So unfortunately, this is the way we do it even now. But Jesus is saying, come. 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 In a few weeks from now, the Holy Ghost would come, which would give us power. But come and dine. I want to offer Jesus Christ to you on today. There's so much more to be said on this. But I want to encourage you to come to Jesus Christ. It's a permanent inv invitation. No matter what you've done. I've known murderers that have come to the cross and said, Lord, forgive me. And God, you know what? God forgave them. And there's an instant knowing that you are forgiven. I've known those that have been nothing but liars. I, I remember as a young man, as I ran with those, I never, I was always in the church, but I remember as a young man, there was a friend of mine named Daryl Murray, my running buddy. We used to, we used to do some stuff. I ain't going to even testify to that. But know this, every Sunday I was on the organ like my nephew. Every Sunday. And he told me one time, we was out doing some devilment. And he said, sister, brother, you own that organ every Sunday. But you know what? You're doing the same thing we do. And you're going to hell like we are. That's what he told me. But on August 12th, 1975, that night, God took me off that organ and knocked me off in the floor right there where you sit, sister. He knocked me off in the floor. When I got up, I really did see new hands. 
I really did see a new herb. But I testified to the Lord. I said, God, I don't want to walk around with a big old Bible in my hand. See so many folks that's bigger devil, big devils with these big old Bibles in their hand. I said, God, I want my friend to see me without me having to testify. And I remember one day, just out the clear blue, I was with my buddies, we was walking around, and Daryl Murray looked at me, and he said, you really in that thing now. You're not with us no more. Can I tell you this? When you come and die, and when you see God for who he is, you're going to start taking off stuff. You're not going to hold on to those things that only pertain to you. But all of a sudden, he's going to change your whole outlook. And those that know you the most will say, you're really real about this now. Can I encourage you, whoever you are out there today, right now at this moment, to give your life to the Lord? And can I tell you, your DNA will be changed. God will give you a new face, a new hands, a new walk. He'll give you a new speech. I want to encourage you on today. Come and dine. Come and dine. Come on. Pray this prayer with me. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I beg of you to just say, you know what? I'm tired. I'm tired. And I want to give myself to the Lord. I want to give myself to the Lord. Every week we come here, I don't know who's listening to me. Amen. But I pray, God, for that soul right now, that young girl, that young man, that one that will hear this today, a week from now, a month from now, a year from now, that they will let this be the moment that change their destiny. Pray this prayer with me. Father God, I am a sinner. I am a sinner, and I deserve to die. Father, forgive me of all of my sin. Wash me and make me whole. God, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Father, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. And Father, fill me with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, your power and your authority. And from this day forward, I will be yours. I belong to you. If you believe that prayer, I want you to begin to give God praise right where you are. Come on, saints. Thank God for those that may be hearing the word on today and have changed their life. Come on, rejoice with them today. Amen. If you believe that, I want you to call us. 773-287-0817. Or even reach out to us at New Mission, New Dot Mission 50 at Outlook.com. Amen. I thank God for you. I believe that this is a seed that's been planted in your life. Amen. Come on. Know him for who he is. Welcome. Welcome to your new sisterhood and your new brotherhood. I thank God for you on today. In Jesus' name. Well, come on back and see us next week. I promise you this. We're going to be doing the same thing that we're doing right now to the glory of God. Come on, thank God today. Amen. If you just want to be a blessing to us, amen, I pray that you can do it three ways. You can cash up, cash up us at dollar sign NMT50. You can sell us at new underscore mission at att.net. Or you can send us a check. Amen. As uh, New Mission Temple, Church of God in Christ at 4700 West Polk Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60644. Come on back and see us again in Jesus' name. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always remember Jesus, Jesus. Always keep him on your mind. Father, we thank you and we bless you for this time.
God, I pray thy covering us over each and every one that have heard the word come and dine in Jesus' name. It is a permanent invitation. Thank God. Amen. What I say unto one, I say unto all. Watch, pray, praise, read your Bibles every day, and be holy in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Come on back and see us next week in Jesus' name.